Alright, this is going to be a first impressions review of the Illinois M17X R2 as I see it. I've had it for less than a week. Um, I've had a couple problems with the system. Um, I'm going to go ahead and review uh, the fixes and uh, what those problems were. Um, I had it for all of about a couple hours before I decided I was going to go ahead and try and update the bias and the graphics drivers. And uh, nowhere in the graphics driver does it tell you this, but apparently when you do a bias update and a driver update, you brick windows until you update the video bias as well. And I couldn't get Windows to boot without blue screening until I was able to perform a BIOS update. Now, how you have to do that is you have to download the BIOS update, the video BIOS updater. It's under video on their site. And the only way I could get my computer to boot was in safe mode. Thankfully, safe mode still allowed me to create a flash drive uh, formatting utility. And basically what you have to do is you get a flash drive. It has to be less than 2 gig to be for the way they do it, because I think they use a BIOS partition in or a fat partition which doesn't recognize partition or something of the nature, I can't remember. But anyway, it won't recognize a flash drive any larger than 2 gigs. You have to use uh, anywhere between 512 or 2 gig. Um, it'll create a bootable partition on that flash drive and you put the flash drive in and then tell the computer to boot off that flash drive and it'll ask you, are you sure you want to update this? You can't undo it. And uh, you go ahead and do that. I can't show you how to do it because I've already done it. And then Windows, for me, started working properly after that again. Um, Though I did notice that my Alienware seemed to be very sensitive to movement. Every time I set it down, it blue screened. I called Alienware once and asked him if it was probably a, a problem with the graphics cards being loose, or one of the graphics cards being loose, because I noticed if I bumped it, it would blue screen. Um, they said that might be possible. It's a common issue. Go ahead and take apart the system. And I've already taken apart an Alien Alienware before, the M17X. My uh, brother has one. So I went ahead and take, took it apart. Um, to check the graphics cards. Neither one of them looked loose. I pulled them out, put them back in just to reset them just in case, and tried again, and I could still blue screen. So I called Alienware again, and they told me that it was a common issue. It was a, that this was a common issue that it blue screened when you moved it. It was a desktop replacement, not a laptop, and it wasn't intended that you move it. It wasn't until after I told the technician that my brother has an Alienware M17X, also, and hasn't had a single problem like this. And then he told me about the fall sensor, which I must comment on. I had already done the research the first time I noticed the problem was a result of bumping it. I did the research. The hard drives in this, in the Alienware, which I have two Western Digital 500 gig drives, they're the BKET drives. They're the ones without the fall sensor. So, apparently it has a fall sensor in the RAID controller or something, I don't know. All I know is they told me to uninstall the fall sensor driver. It was actually listed as accelerometer under program and features. Um, it could also be listed as fall sensor. So if you're noticing that problem, you're bumping your Alienware and it's blue screening, um, try removing that driver. I'm not entirely sure why it blue screens to do that. Um, technically, the only thing the fall sensor is supposed to do is park the head to prevent uh, uh, damage to the disc, which... Um, and the disc should start back up right after that, which is, I don't know why the driver tells it to blue screen for that, but basically that's um, how it works. Another comment. This is not as powerful as a desktop. The Core i7 Extreme that I have in this one, I have the Core, uh, Core i7-940XM. It runs at uh, 2.13 gigahertz. It's, I think it's an 8 main cache. And a uh, turbo boost to 3.33, uh, 4 cores, 8 threads. This processor benchmarks about the same place as a Core 2 quad at 3 gigahertz desktop uh, processor. So keep that in mind. It's not equivalent to a desktop iCore 7 Extreme by any means. It's equivalent to about a 3 gigahertz uh, Core 2 quad. I've actually compared the two. I have a Core 2 um, quad at 3 gigahertz, actually it's overclocked to 3.2 in my desktop, and it slightly outperforms the one in my Alienware. But it does produce significantly less heat. Um, the desktop one, or the laptop one, because it's a mobile one, it uses less power. Also, the 5870s in this thing, um, while they are very powerful for a mobile card, they're only equivalent to about a 5770, well, 
Uh, one of them is equivalent to 5770. Two of them is equivalent to 25770s in crossfire mode. So if you're looking for this to be like the absolute kick butt machine you're ever going to touch, keep in mind it's a laptop, it's designed for portability, it has a maximum amount of power that it can use, and heat generation is very important when building this thing. So this thing is not going to give you the, you know, if you go out and spend $500 on a graphics card, $1,000 on a CPU, uh, you know, $500 in RAM, a power supply, a hard drive, a case, you're not going to get the same performance. But this is an all-in-one deal package. This is a laptop. And uh, keeping that in mind, I will mention that I have only run a few games on it so far. Um, GTA 4 is one of the games I've tried. Um, I'm kind of disappointed with the performance I got. Um, it was kind of it was kind of laggy. Um, I tried Need for Speed Shift just out of curiosity. I cranked that all the way up, and I did a, a race, the first race, which is by yourself. And there's another one where you actually do it with other cars, because I was thinking the other cars might actually lag it. They didn't lag it too much. Um, it wasn't that noticeable. Um, uh, the Source engine runs pretty good, like Left 4 Dead, Counter-Strike Counter -Strike Source, Half-Life 2, all those others. They run pretty good. If you make sure you get your um, drivers configured right, I actually misconfigured my driver and actually caused it to run really crappy. I tried Batman. It ran okay. That was, I was tweaking my graphics driver settings. I may have that was actually right after I started tweaking my driver settings and m messed up my drivers actually, which may have resulted in why Batman ran so horribly. Um, I've ran Modern Warfare Two. I've only done the intro where you're doing the shooting test, um, and that runs relatively well um, at maximum settings, including anti-aliasing. But you can't turn up anti-aliasing all the way anyway. I gave uh, Need for Speed uh, Worlds a try. I just found out about today. It's an online racing game that the content, I think, is dynamic or controlled on the, their server or whatever. I think it's kind of something like kind of like Second Life, only for racing. I'm not entirely sure. I only tried it for like five minutes. Um, and uh, at maximum settings, a, you notice a hit. Um, it, it probably drops down to about 15 frames per second. In some instances, you probably average about 20, maybe 25. So you can kind of notice it lagging. Um, but then again, I did have their settings cranked all the way up to extreme, and it was a relatively new game. So they may have had um, higher-end uh, cards in mind, seeing as how a probably a single desktop 5850 or 5870 uh, probably cannot perform the two cards in this. So that's probably something that should be noted. Um, this, I didn't realize it, but this model does not actually have an integrated card. I noted, I realized I mentioned I didn't want to boot an integrated card. It doesn't have an integrated card. The first release of the Alienware had a 940 NVIDIA as, a, as an alternative to your ATIs. Um, usually the iCores have a video chipset in them, an integrated video chipset in them. Um, most all the iCore 7 solutions that are available with this one do not have it. I don't know if the i5 that's available gives this thing an integrated card or not. But my configuration does not have an integrated card. Um, but nonetheless, uh, running idle, I haven't really tested that very much. But I'm thinking you d probably can get about maybe an hour out of it. Nothing like that for gaming performance. Um... I'm noticing that the clock is up at about nine minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and split this into two parts. Um, I'm going to probably show a little bit of lighting and uh, a couple other things in the next video. I just wanted to do the rant video on this one, so uh, to talk about the problems I've been having and general performance of it. So anyway, uh, if you want to see some of the lighting in the uh, I was going to show Winamp and the effects it can do. Uh, go ahead and go to part two.